Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. There's people in the room from various countries around the world. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here, especially in Australia. I know it's six o'clock in the morning there, and I really, really appreciate you getting up and showing up for this call. So we are recording this coaching session. If anyone does not want to be recorded, just please leave your camera and or your microphone off. And for anyone who finds this video on YouTube, information on the Magnetic Mind Method and the Superconscious Recode is in the description box below. So please like, share, and subscribe if you find the content helpful or if you feel this content would be helpful to somebody you know. So this coaching session includes a superconscious recode. So for anyone that has not experienced a recode before, there are a few concepts and premises that I do need to go over to ensure that you get the most out of this session. So we are very familiar with the self-conscious mind or ego and the subconscious mind. And there are many different ways to affect change to thought processes and habits. These processes can be really cumbersome and they can create more problems as we try to solve one. So there are some perfectly excellent reasons for your thoughts and habits and behaviors to date. They got you to this now moment. So as we move through life with a focus on creating the life we love, we might find that certain internal programming no longer serves us. Any thought loops or rationalizations and internalized conditioning that gets set on autopilot, which might have been passed down, passed on, or learned, it can cause us to fail, fall back, or at best, slow down. So the conscious rational mind or the self is formed between the ages of four and seven. So that's the part of our brains, this memory. It's concerned with the quality of our life. It is tasked with rationale and learning. It communicates with reason and language and for all intents and purposes, it's the captain of our ship. But from just before birth until the self-conscious mind takes over, so around four to seven years old, our subconscious is absorbing programming. It's recognizing patterns, fundamental motor skills, how to survive in this environment. So this part of our brains is concerned with the quantity of life. It's tasked with learning anything it believes is relevant to keeping us safe and alive. It communicates with emotion and behavior. And that you could consider that the crew of your ship. Preceding both of those is our superconscious mind. So this is the intelligent field of information that created and it grew your body. It oversees your body systems. It organizes your nutrient intake. It arranges your life as a human. It contains all of the information and is responsible for organizing your mind in the first place. The superconscious is concerned with your experience of life. It has no emotion. And it doesn't communicate, it simply observes. It organizes information. Superconscious is the ship, like a self-actualizing ship. It's got unlimited information. So a recode works on the premise that we can connect and interact with the superconscious, okay? So similar to how hypnosis works with the subconscious, we're familiar with that. You know, you go into hypnotherapy and you can like communicate with your inner child, some subconscious parts of you. That, that's one way to go. 
we can communicate with our subconscious in a variety of different ways. And talk therapy can connect with your self-conscious mind, helps you figure out how, you, how to think about something, how to make sense of things. That's your self-conscious. Talk therapy is great for that. And inner child work and anger management and hypnotherapy, those are all really great options for your subconscious. But the super conscious created both of those. It's like the master programmer, it holds the original code. So the super conscious self, it's still you. It's got the master control over your life experience and your programming. So the premise is, when asked, it can locate those obsolete beliefs, habits, ways of being, and it can overwrite that programming with more useful information just to enhance your life experience. So when I connect to my superconscious, I'll be in the space of that field of information that we all share. It's the unified field or the collective consciousness. It's there that I can connect and share information with your superconscious. Your superconscious, it's not really used to being addressed or asked to do anything. So given that that's the case, we're gonna use very basic communication. I'll use simple terms and metaphors, kind of like you're trying to explain something to a small child, just to be sure that the communication is clear. So if you imagine your experience as a river, it's flowing towards your desired life, but there's, an, there's stuff in the way, there's obstructions there, sticks and boulders and things that are slowing you down or stopping the flow altogether, mm -hmm. preventing you from moving forwards in that flow of water. So you created those obstructions. They were super useful. Once upon a time, you needed to be exactly where you are. And all of those sticks and boulders and stuff in your river, useful. Except for now you want to get downriver. So if you created all of that, and it's reasonable to make the assumption that you created that to keep yourself safe because most of that was created by your subconscious it's all of the patterns it's all of the beliefs it's all of the understanding of how you are in this world how it is how they are all of those ideas they're little boulders and sticks around your river and a lot of times they're not in your way at all but when they are it it's a bit of a situation so if you created them, it stands to reason that you can move them out of the way or push them off to the something. You, you sh should be able to handle that. If, if you created it, you could do something with it. But if you're not aware of exactly which ones or how they got there exactly, you don't remember then it can be really tricky to get past those things that are holding you back and hanging you up. So I can ask and guide your super conscious to move those things out of your way just to allow the river to flow freely, allow you to move towards where you want to go, your desired end result, okay? So in talking through and exploring this topic, of justice. You may find that memories, stories, emotions, and thoughts that you put to bed long ago, they might begin to resurface. They were dormant until they're triggered and awakened back into your current reality, into your active experience. 
we do this deliberately. I'm going to do it on purpose. I'm going to try and trigger enough, right? Because these are the very things that are holding you back. We call it resistance. And I want to stir it up a bit so that your super conscious can identify it. Then maybe rearrange, reconsider these things which have you know, become the sticks and boulders damming up your river. So having identified the area of your internal resistance to your true choice, that life you love, you're gonna measure it on a scale of zero to 10. How much is in the way? Then we're gonna verbally set the intention that any recoding requested of the superconscious is for the purpose of improving your life experience to provide you greater satisfaction in life. This coding can be changed, modified, or replaced on request. Recodes are only permanent for however long they're useful to you. Before the recode, I'm gonna ask for your permission to connect and communicate with your superconscious and that is just granted by giving your intention. Okay, so as you sit in like this relaxed state, I'm just gonna get you to sit with your eyes closed and I'm gonna address the aspect of you and talk to it. Okay, we're gonna, I'll just call it super conscious, give it a name. And I'm gonna ask it to identify the various specific issues that are creating the resistance, what's stopping you from going after that life you love? What's stopping you from getting that choice, that choice you wanna make, that decision you wanna make? What's holding you back? What is it exactly? Superconscious can identify that for you. You don't need to be completely aware of all of the details of any of it. We just need to find where the you think about electrical wires, sometimes some electricity is bleeding off. It's, it's kind of shorting out. So where are you losing your power? Where is it bleeding off? There's some thought, maybe your, your attention is being directed off on some other track. And maybe you've got a multi-track mind. What if we could make it so that you've got a one track mind? We're just gonna dismantle the old tracks unless you want them back and then we just go get them back and we'll build it again because we know how. So it gives you a sense of a, a lot more clarity, a lot less confusion. And we just pick which way you wanna go. Just like when you put it into a GPS, where are you going, where are you at now? plug it in, there's your next steps. And maybe there are 18 ways to get there, but we're gonna pick one so that it's not so confusing. So as we're going through this particular recode, it's gonna, that takes about 20 minutes. You just listen, it's not a trance, you stay in control of the whole thing. You're just listening. It's a thought exercise. And you might notice waves of, I don't know, body sensations or feelings make you feel some kind of way or weird thoughts come, come and go. Just notice them like they're breezing by. And if you don't notice anything, then that's perfect too. So whatever your reaction is whatever you notice is exactly perfect for you. And what I do want to say is that you might notice like a lot of energy moving or a lot of something. And if you just allow it and expect it and notice it, that's fine because you it's not, it's not unsettling or dangerous because it just comes and goes. It's really, really interesting to pay attention as you're listening. 
So you're going to see evidence that this works only when you witness your own behavior changing and aligning with that true choice. So you know that it did something when you can finally do the thing, when you can finally take the action. You're finally going to take that step. The paralysis wears off. You're not stuck anymore. You're not of two minds. It's not confusing. You get clarity and you can do what you need to do to take a step, okay? So that's really what we're looking for. So today I wanna to talk about justice. So I was thinking about how often we can all get stirred up by the idea or the judgment that it's not fair. The idea of fairness stops us from taking action. It can stop us from going after our heart's desire. Sometimes it can hold us back as we take on the responsibility of fighting to bring justice to a situation. We can distract ourselves with the idea that somehow we can even the score, balance the scales. Like, think about that. Do you put down everything you're going for all of your dreams and wishes just because, oh, oh, that's not fair. You pick up a sword and you start fighting that battle. Do you find yourself taking responsibility to fight for that justice? And what is justice? What does fair mean? So I love my words. I looked it up. Wikipedia was my favorite. Wikipedia says that justice in its broadest sense is the principle that people receive that which they deserve with the interpretation of what then constitutes deserving being impacted upon by numerous fields with many differing viewpoints and perspectives including the concepts of moral correctness based on ethics, rationality, law, religion, equity, and fairness. The Cambridge Dictionary simply states that justice is fairness in the way people are dealt with. So let's think about that for a minute. Justice is a principle that people get what they deserve, but the whole darn thing is built on all of these different points of view, all of these different perspectives around ethics, law, religion, morality, equity, rationality. So justice depends. It depends on who and what and where and when and why. Justice isn't very black and white at all. So what's fair? Fair is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as treating someone in a way that is right or reasonable or treating a group of people equally and not allowing personal opinions to influence your judgment. your judgment. So that presumes you have to make a judgment to be, to determine what's fair. So how many times do you, do we self-appoint as the judge? We know it's colored by our own 
rationality, morality, ethics, religion, our culture. So why do we care what's fair? What's going on there? What's going on in your brain that people care what's fair? Clearly, it's an individual thing. Clearly, it's a judgment that can look any which way. So why do we care? Why does it need to be fair? So I was thinking about this and I'm thinking, okay, well, the concept of justice is useful. It's useful for us to understand that polarity, all nature balances itself. We know this. It's a law of nature. Equilibrium is stable and it's desirable. It makes us feel safe. It allows us to trust. We're programmed to expect that those scales be balanced. So justice at that level is the scale of the natural order of things. Our subconscious selves learned how the world goes round when we were children. And so it's understandable that the concept, work with me on this one. If our subconscious selves, remember, just before birth to max seven years old, we're little kids. And we were learning how the world works because we need to stay alive. And that's perfectly understandable. Super efficient, brilliant situation going on in your head. Brilliant. Is it possible that the concept of fairness was possibly not entirely understood by our childish minds? Is it possible that it may have been oversimplified? Patterns were recognized, labels put on things, and the idea of fair would most certainly have been absorbed into our understanding from a bit of a skewed perspective. So the fundamental learning that forms the basis of our brain's thought processes. They've likely become dormant memories as we built on top of them. You know, when they're foundational, they're below the surface. They're subconscious. We don't even know what we know about fairness and justice and all these things. Not really. So, As we grow in our understanding and we intellectualize as adults, we're just reasoning in our self-conscious mind. And that's fine. What happens though, we run into a little bit of trouble. We run into trouble when we identify something as unfair. Then those dormant memories get touched. And they begin to communicate with emotions. Feels like an attack. Feels not safe. Your brain reacts with this chemical release designed to push you to act. And it's not fair. You find yourself behaving in reaction to the circumstance. It makes a lot of sense. Like you might switch into autopilot though. You've got this autopilot reaction. And then you might take a childish action. Because your autopilot was programmed before the age of seven to make it fair, seek justice. So sometimes that's perfectly appropriate. But sometimes that behavior 
actually sabotages what you're trying to achieve. So there is a well-studied self-limiting belief. Well, there's, there's seven to 14 of them, but this one I want to highlight. I don't deserve. We all come up with these beliefs when we're young. So anybody who has, you can look them up. Self-limiting beliefs. Not worthy. Don't deserve not significant enough, not capable, don't belong. Anyway, there's a bunch of them. Well studied, but I don't deserve. The person who identifies with this idea of deservedness can get entirely hung up on the concept of justice. And they can experience an awful lot of self-sabotage as a result. Okay, so is there a part of you that has decided at some point that it is up to you to seek justice? Do you believe deep down somewhere that you need to fix the injustices that you encounter in your life? Do you believe somehow that you can't move forward until justice is served? How many of us have dug in our heels and stood firm for what was right? Maybe you've experienced the pressure, the stress, the anxiety of feeling the obligation to act in a fair and just manner because what you really want doesn't seem to be fair. And you cannot, in good conscience, do something to create an unfair situation for someone else, especially if they haven't done anything to deserve it. But then you're stuck. Your views on justice, deserving, fairness, obligation, they have you stuck. And you cannot reason your way to a life you love. So have you ever been there? Stuck fighting a battle instead of creating a life you love? Feeling like things need to feel safe and balanced, even keeled, in order to move forward? Now ask yourself, is it true? Are you sure? Do you really have to? What about, what about taking a look at justice from a slightly different angle? What about the idea that everything in nature seeks and reaches balance on its own? You hear these comments all through our language. They'll get what they deserve. What comes around goes around, serves them right. He'll get his comeuppance. She'll get what's coming to her. You hear it all the time. But what if? What if you didn't have to address these individual instances of injustice? What if, what if it's not possible to move forward in complete balance? What if it just seemed like you needed everything calm, even keeled and balanced before you take a step? But what if that's not true? Is it true? When you're standing still and you're in, you're balanced, when you go to take a step, you have to lift your foot. That doesn't seem logical. That's not gonna keep you steady and balanced to lift your foot up off the ground. But how else are you gonna take a step? What if it's not true that it needs to be addressed before you move forward?
And what if fair and just was not the desired outcome of each interaction? What if fair and just is the overall container and an overall state of being? Nature balances it. What if it, what if you don't need to right the wrongs before you go for what you want? So there's polarity in the 3D world. There's yin, yang, back, forth, black, white, up, down, positive, negative. This polarity defines our 3D world. So consider that fact that you cannot take a step forward without lifting up your foot. Maybe our understanding of justice and fairness could be pulled inward. Think about it. If you spend a little time introspecting, a little bit of introspection, are you being fair to yourself? Or are you sacrificing yourself for something that seems to benefit everyone but you? Where's the justice in that? Who sees to it that you are being fair to you? Is it fair to offer yourself in sacrifice to others without their consent? Is it fair for you to not speak what's true for you? In the natural order of things, could it be that seeking justice is the very thing that creates the injustice? Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I invite you to consider that knowing ourselves and living authentic lives calls each of us to be true to ourselves, to be fair to ourselves, to live in integrity. So sometimes the distraction around the fairness clouds our vision of what the right thing is. It's been seasoned with self-deception, definitions, understandings, beliefs, emotions, family, culture, past decisions, all designed to keep us safe. And safe is good. But what's the point if we're stressed, depressed, anxious, and unhappy? When justice is standing between us and our happiness, could we choose to believe that being fair to ourselves is where our responsibility begins? That standing in our truth is the safest, most stable place to be? I'm going to say that again. Standing in your truth is the safest and most stable place to be. So let's do a recode. I ask you to choose a desired end result. I want you to think what. It, what do you want to create in your life that you haven't yet? I invite you to choose living a life you love with authenticity and integrity. Live a life you love with authenticity and integrity. That one feels good to me. Choose whatever you're working on. If you've got your true choices, go ahead and pick one of those. 
or join me with authentic, integrous life you love. But let's recode and move all of this justice energy out of our way. So again, to those of you who are new to a recode, simply sit in a relaxed state, eyes closed. I will address you super conscious as though it's a small child, I'm going to call it super conscious. And I will ask it to identify the various specific issues creating your internal resistance to this choice. The resistance can have been internalized from past lives, events, experiences, beliefs, future memories. Think about that one, future memories. Part-time personalities might even have been imported from other lives through the family. Could come from anywhere. Doesn't really matter. If it's not useful to you and it's in your way of going for what you love, then it's not useful, re relevant information anymore. And so I'm going to help guide your superconscious to the areas needing a recode in light of your true choice, okay? So you don't need to do anything. Just sit and listen to my voice and just notice the thoughts, feelings, and sensations that come into your experience and just allow them. So as I'm going through this, yeah, this justice, is there something that you wish you could do, but you just don't, you want to be fair to everybody? Are you sitting down and staying quiet? Because what you want doesn't look fair to you. Are you being held back because you're noticing some big injustice? is trying to victimize you and taunt you into a battle. What are you fighting for and why aren't you fighting for you? Where's your happy? Where's that life you love? What does it look like? What do you want to do so bad? You know that thing where it's like, I would, but I'd like to do, well, if I do that, then you know that thing, that hard thing, that tough decision, because it feels like it's only fair to you. But I suggest that that is the point. I suggest that if you're not fair to you, your world around you will reflect that injustice back at you. The safest, most stable place to stand is standing in your own truth, speaking your own truth, and making the tough decision for your own happiness. Other people will have judgment. But we've already learned those judgments come from everywhere. Various cultures, they come from everywhere. So let them judge. They're going to judge anyway. You judged them. You judged yourself. What if you didn't have to be the judge? If you personify that energy, that balancing of energy, she's called karma. Can you just let that be? Can you go after what you want? It's your life. It's your experience. And nobody's going to be lined up thanking you for sacrificing all of those years not going after your dream. 
because of your personal internal perception of what's fair and what's the right thing. What's right is your truth. That is true. That is correct. That is just. All of those words mean the same thing. So let's choose it. I choose to live a life I love. And I just want you to sit back and take a deep breath. And I want you to concentrate yourself into your heart space. As you breathe in, just suck all of your energy right down into your heart. I want you to feel your connection to the earth. I want you to feel your connection to the sun. Notice your connection to the moon. And notice that no matter where you are, there is no space between you and this earth. You're sitting on something which is sitting on something which is on something, or maybe you are sitting squarely on the ground. But either way, imagine you're the lightning rod. Imagine having that energy hit you and you're the lightning rod and it grounds down through you. And I want you to notice the movement of that energy through your body. And I want you to notice what it's like to be in your body, to be occupying this body, this restricted body. And just silently in your heart, please give me permission to connect. Just with your intention, I give Sarah permission to connect with my superconscious. Superconscious, are you there? Superconscious, can you notice the resistance to going after a life I love? And do you see all of the justice in the way? Everybody, I just want you to make a mental note on a scale of zero to 10. How tough does that look? Zero is clear sailing. 10 is choppy, choppy, choppy water. Getting caught in a whirlpool, the little eddies on the edge of a stream. You're not going anywhere, you're caught up on the banks. Got stuck behind a rock. Superconscious, do you see the metaphor of the river of desire? Do you see the little brook with the little leaf floating down the brook? It gets stuck, and then it gets pushed, then it gets caught up. Superconscious, can you treat that? No, you don't know how. All right, well, what, superconscious, show me the priority. Show me what's, what's the biggest priority here? Oh, dear, superconscious, can we go back? Let's. Just take us back, back on our timeline. We need to go back to where we understood fair. You show us that scene, what was going on there? I don't get it, I don't get it. 
It doesn't look fair. I want you to notice how you felt at that young age and you're standing there in the middle of this situation and somebody passes judgment. I'm gonna go get mom. I'm telling dad. And you try to explain. And somebody else tells you, this is how it's gonna be. And that's fair and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. It doesn't seem right. But that's fair. And we learn fair is important. And we learn to behave. What they said was fair. So now, now that little child knows. They said it was fair. Everything will stay still and stable. And it seems to be okay that they feel this ache in their heart. They don't care. They want what's fair and they don't care that that little child has an achy heart. That's not allowed to matter. Superconscious, do you see all of this? Can you treat those definitions and do a massive change history and everything? Thank you. Now, Superconscious, I want you to lift us above this scene and I want you to look down on it. Everybody just look down on this little child trying to figure out how it is. This isn't making much sense. But that's okay, little children don't need to make sense. They just have to learn how it is. This one's not an easy one to learn. It took you a minute. It took you a minute to learn it, but learn it you did because it's clearly very important to your survival, especially with these people in this environment. This is very important. You learned it and you learned it well. Superconscious, can you bring all of those learnings forward and blend that energy with the energy of adult understanding and superconscious reasoning? Please provide a perceptual shift and show us three different angles of that same scene, different camera views through the eyes of the child, through the eyes of the foe, and through the eyes of the person who judged. Superconscious, can you treat all of that? Do a massive change history and everything. Thank you. Superconscious, we're going to expand our definition of fair and just. Expand the definition to include and prioritize ourselves. Please refer to our values. What do we spend our time, money, and attention on, Superconscious? You know that list. You observe it daily. Please include ourselves on that list.
and superconscious, can you lock into the feeling of deserving, worth it, capable, belonging, significant, perfectly imperfect? Can you lock into that feeling and can you grow it? And I want you to notice how it feels in your body when your brain is searching for that feeling for you. Notice how we can ask superconscious to turn a feeling on for you. Superconscious, can you bring us back to present? with that new perspective on what is fair and what is just. Superconscious, apply it to the plan, go forward, please weave it into the obvious next steps towards living the life we love. Superconscious, do you see where we're going? Got a pin in the map. There it is. Superconscious, can you see where we're at? What else is in our way, Superconscious? Can we just clear out, just go right to the river? Let's just Move those sticks and boulders out of the way. We can choose for something to matter. We think about it. We focus on it. Push our attention on it. We value it. And it materializes because it matters. It is matter. Have you considered what happens when it doesn't matter? Does it really matter? Superconscious, open up a reevaluation of the things that matter to us. Cross reference justice with the list of values. And superconscious, I want you to take us down river downriver just far enough for us to get a taste of who we are in that life, that life we're creating, that life we're building. We had to make some tough decisions to get here. Superconscious, can you open up a line of communication? And I want you guys to look back down your timeline and I want you to notice what tough decision did you need to make that was fair for you? Where did you stand in your truth where it mattered? It mattered. What did you materialize? What did you manifest? What is your next obvious action? Superconscious is any justice related resistance in the way anymore. Superconscious, could you please tag and treat all remaining resistance? Any little thing that we can get hung up on, caught up on, held back by, all of those things, could you just, just want you to smooth them down in the perfect order, in the perfect way, in the perfect time, come up with an order of operations. We're gonna keep it balanced, keep the equation. The givens are now variables. Please apply that to a massive change history and everything.
superconscious, can you please treat all body systems, calm down the cortisol, calm down the anxiety? I want you to grow confidence. Let's create a cocktail. Warmth, confidence, unconditional love. Fortitude, passion. Grounded down, it's not in fantasy land. We're pulling it right down into this 3D black and white world. We're gonna let justice be served by the laws of nature. And we're going to concentrate on being fair to us. Please grow the feeling of deservedness. Superconscious, please balance all body systems, releasing anything that no longer serves, any toxins from the body, any residual chemical, anything that does not serve what we are building can be released. And superconscious, please treat the energetic body. Do a full rinse and oil change of the energy. Allow all of the old energy to just flow down into the earth to be filtered. Just want you to notice how that feels, to have that just feel like it's just running down you like liquid honey. So sweet and warm. Releasing the need to be fair and just to others. Give them back their power. Retrieve your own superconscious. Can you pull in all of the power into the center chakra system and please align all seven chakras, top to bottom, bottom to top, front and back. Treat all meridians and do a massive change history and everything. Thank you. Superconscious, please light up our internal scales of justice. Make sure they are properly balanced. The black and the white, the yin and the yang, so masculine and feminine the right and the wrong, the up and the down, the positive and the negative. Put them in perfect balance within. And the perfect balance of that energy empowers and grows and blooms your ability fuels you to be able to take that step, knowing that that first step, not as balanced as standing still, but you're going somewhere. Superconscious, is there any other resistance to pursuing the life you love, making the tough choices? Superconscious, I want you to take all of the memories that we've touched today, the old past memories, any passed down memories from past lives, future memories, present memories, our imaginings, our past memories, 
ego states, tandem memories, quantum memories, memories across all timelines, all space, anything that we touched today. I want you super conscious to take those memories and reconnect them. Reattach them solidly into the fabric of the universe. And super conscious, I want you to ground all of that. Bring it right down to the ground, 200 feet into the ground. Anchor that energy down for more satisfaction and less pain in this life. Now I just want you guys to take a few deep breaths. Just notice all that energy moving around, anything that's happening in your body or your mind. Stretch yourself back into your body again. Take a deep breath and oxygenate your physical body. Exhale all the carbon dioxide. Take a second deep breath and clear your mind with that deep breath in. Just blow all of the thoughts out of your mind. Exhale. And take a third breath, but this time I want you to breathe it in through your heart. And fill your soul and your spirit. And as you exhale, just send it all around the world. Knowing that you're connected with a never-ending supply of that. And when you're ready... You want to come back and let me know either in the chat or you're welcome to unmute and let me know how you're doing on a scale of zero to 10. How tricky does it feel when it comes to what is fair? I see a one and a two. Lovely. Ooh. I'm seeing twos and threes and ones, but I do see a seven in there. Another one. So for anyone that having a little bit of a hard time releasing some of that. Just know that 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 concept is pretty foundational to the way we understand how the world works. And we don't want to knock our foundation so bad that we're totally off balance and off kilter. We're not going on tilt. Our superconscious will not recode something when it's unsafe. So I would invite your superconscious, and you can do this as well, invite your superconscious to tag, to notice, notice any time this topic comes up and work away at treating down the things that create the resistance around fairness and justice. Remember what I asked for, what I suggested you, invited you to do, was put yourself as a priority for fairness and justice in your own life. I did not suggest that the other fairness and justice, though all those situations, I didn't suggest that they didn't matter. I suggested that you too matter. 
And when you have to decide between you yourself and an outside circumstance, your responsibility is to you. And the universe will, the universe has your back. Karma never loses an address. So just as you're ready to come back, if you would like to come back, if anybody's got any feedback or has any comments on that, I welcome it. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Oh, Suzanne, yes. Hi, Suzanne. That was super, super powerful where it, um, it shook me to the core because I think that's what I'm dealing with right now about feeling like I deserve and how fair or unfair that is and the justice concept. It was very, very powerful. It shook me. So thanks for that. I think I'm going to just, woo, soar. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Suzanne. That's lovely. Awesome. And Julie put her camera on. Hi, Julie. How are you doing? Me, Julie, or is there another yes. Julie? Julie Smith. Yeah, good job. I loved it. Feeling good? Yes, and I I love the um, the context, and you did really. Well. I thought you did really well. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm yeah, glad you were able to join. Yeah, I've been Thank here. You. I just had my you know it's on my phone, so you get to see my ceiling instead of me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but um so but that was really good there was one time and i wish i'd written it down there was one time when you said uh something like what does that feel like or whatever and i wanted to say i was like when are you going to be when are you going to be uh fair to yourself um it was right in the middle of when you were talking about not being fair to i don't know we'll talk about it later but i was just like Oh, that would have been powerful for you to say, when are you going to be that way for you? <laughs> but, but it was really good. Other than that, I mean, really good. So thanks, thanks Julie. I appreciate it. So guys, I'm going to close off the recording. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. And again, for those of you on YouTube, all of the information on the Magnetic Mind Method and on the Superconscious Recode and my contact details in the description box below this video. So thank you so much for joining us and I hope to hear from you soon.